How did the universe begin? How did it get to be the way it is? What did it look like in the past? What does the future hold? Here at the Institute for Computational Cosmology, we're interested in the largest possible scales that humans can study, the scale of the universe as a whole. So how do we go about learning about the cosmos? We use two very, very powerful techniques. One is we look at the universe through our telescopes. The other one, and this has only been possible in the last few decades, we do the next best thing to an experiment. We model the universe in a supercomputer. To look out at the universe, we use giant telescopes on the tops of mountains and in orbit around the Earth, like the Hubble Space Telescope. The most distant objects that we see as we peer out into the darkness are distant galaxies, similar to the Milky Way, and giant violent explosions called supernovae, which mark the deaths of stars. Our key questions are, what do galaxies look like? And how are they arranged on the sky? Are they scattered randomly across the universe, or are they clustered and clumped? Telescopes allow us to do both of these things. We can take really detailed pictures of an individual galaxy and study, study its shape. Or we can take the wider view, map out a large swathe of the universe and see where the galaxies are in the sky. Every point of light in this, this map is an entire galaxy, similar to the Milky Way. And there are hundreds of millions of them in even a tiny fraction of the universe. But we're talking about such enormous scales here that, that it would take light three billion years to get from one side of this map to the other. What the map shows us is that the galaxies aren't scattered at random across the universe. Galaxies are arranged in this web-like structure where there's lots of galaxies all in one place and then enormous empty space between them. But the big question is, well, why does it look like this? We try to answer the question of why the universe looks like it does by doing simulations. Um, so the real universe took 14 billion years to form. Um, we can't create another real universe and we don't want to wait that long anyway. So we do these simulations inside computers. We use computers both like this one here, but also massive supercomputers. This supercomputer here in Durham is the most powerful in the UK dedicated to astronomy and cosmology. In one second it can do over 140 trillion basic calculations. The power of this computer would be the equivalent of about 6,000 individual desktops. Even with this speed though, it can still take several weeks or even months to complete one of our simulations. To do a simulation we start with a picture of what we think the universe looked like at early times, shortly after the Big Bang. Um, for example, so this is a map taken by the Planck satellite um, very recently and this is basically the, the starting point for our simulation. We then evolve our simulation to the present day and look at the comparison between what the universe should look like and what we think it looks like. So we instruct the computer using some rules that describe the basic laws of physics. We then set our simulation running and our virtual universe takes shape. The most important ingredient in this universe, though, is the dark matter, which is a yet-to-be-discovered fundamental particle. Even though it's not yet discovered, we do have very strong evidence that it exists. The strongest evidence of this w would come from clusters of galaxies, which are groups of galaxies um, that, are, that are together. And from what we see, the system shouldn't be gravitationally bound, so it shouldn't stay together as a system. But it does. So the only way to explain this is this missing matter, or dark matter, as it's known. So when we're doing our simulations, we need to have this dark matter. Otherwise, our simulations don't look like the real universe. Most of the stuff in the universe is dark matter. The dark matter makes up a sort of skeleton from which all the visible components, stars and galaxies hang. There's dark matter everywhere. The universe is full of it, and we have every reason to believe that the dark matter is some form of exotic elementary particle. But exactly what particle or what its properties are, we do not yet know. However, different types of particle, different kinds of dark matter, would produce universes that look different. By comparing simulations of universes with different types of dark matter to the real universe, 
we narrow down the possibilities. We're lucky to live at a time when our knowledge of the cosmos is growing dramatically. Yet, some of the most fascinating questions, such as the origin of the universe, the nature of the dark matter, remain open.